Two ladies entered a big store and made their way to the section where they sell perfumes. They spotted a tester bottle on the counter and decided to try it out. The first lady, Sharon, sprayed a little bit of the perfume on her wrist and took a deep breath to smell it. That smells pretty good, doesn't it? Sharon asked, holding her wrist up for her friend to smell. Yeah, it does. What's the name of this perfume? Her friend inquired. It's called Viennes Amour. Viennes Amour. What does that mean? Just then, a store employee who was nearby stepped in to help. Viennes Amour, ladies, is French. It translates to come to me in English, the clerk explained. Sharon sniffed her wrist again, thinking about the name. That doesn't smell like come to me, she said, offering her arm to her friend again. Does this smell like come to you? <laughs> Two poor kids were invited to a birthday party at the house of a kid whose family was very rich. This rich kid's house was so lavish that it even had its own swimming pool. Naturally, all the children at the party were excited to jump in and swim. After having a great time in the pool, they all got out to change their clothes. During this time, one of the poor kids leans over to his buddy and whispers, Did you see that the rich kid's private part is pretty small? His friend nods and replies, Yeah, I noticed. It's probably because he's got toys to play with. <laughs> Morris wakes up one morning feeling terrible, with a really bad headache, a sure sign he overdid it the night before. He can't seem to remember any of the things he did. Looking around, he finds his bathrobe on the floor and puts it on. As he does, he feels something unusual in one of the pockets. Curious, he reaches in and pulls out a bra. Puzzled, he thinks to himself, what on earth happened last night? Still trying to piece together his evening, he stumbles towards the bathroom for a closer look at himself. Reaching into the other pocket of his robe, he finds yet another surprise, a pair of women's panties. His mind races as he wonders, what did I get up to last night? It must have been one crazy party. He finally makes it to the bathroom, opens the door, and steps in front of the mirror to inspect his reflection. That's when he notices something small and string-like hanging out of his mouth. Staring at his reflection, he desperately hopes. Please, if there's any God, let this be a teabag. <laughs> a college professor was reminding her students about the important final exam scheduled for the next day. She stood in front of the class and announced, Listen up, everyone. I expect all of you to be here tomorrow for the exam. I won't accept any excuses for not showing up, unless something extreme happens like a nuclear attack, a serious injury or illness, or if there's a tragedy in your immediate family. Other than those reasons, I won't accept any other excuses. A guy in the class raised his hand from the back. He asked, And what if I tell you tomorrow that I'm too tired to take the test, because I'm suffering from complete and total exhaustion from too much sex. His question set off a wave of laughter and snickers throughout the classroom. Once everyone had calmed down and quieted, the teacher looked at him and replied, Well, I guess you'd have to write the exam with your other hand. <laughs> a traveler landed in Australia, excited to explore the vast outback. He rented a car and began his journey through the remote areas. As he drove, he witnessed a shocking scene. A man was engaged in a sexual act with a sheep by the roadside. Disturbed and bewildered by what he had just seen, he urgently needed to calm his nerves. So he stopped at the first bar he found in the middle of nowhere. Eager to forget the bizarre incident, he ordered a strong scotch whiskey. As he was about to drink it, he noticed something equally startling in the bar. There was a man with only one leg, furiously masturbating right there at the bar. Completely shocked and appalled, the tourist exclaimed, For heaven's sake, what on earth is happening in this place? I've barely been here an hour, and I've already seen a man having sex with a sheep, 
and now there's a guy pleasuring himself openly in the bar. The bartender replied to the startled tourist, Well, you can't expect a man with only one leg to catch a sheep, can you? <laughs> a young man from the city fell in love with a girl from the countryside. She told him that he needed to get her father's permission before they could get married. Eager to marry his love, the city boy went to their farm to speak with her father. I want to marry your daughter, he declared. The father looked at him and said, Well, young man, you need to prove to me that you're a suitable match for my daughter. I'll do anything for the woman I love, the city boy replied eagerly. The father pointed to a cow grazing in the field and said, You see that cow? I want you to go and screw it. Confused but determined, the young man agreed, saying, All right, if that's what it takes for my love. After he did what was asked, he came back and inquired, Can I marry your daughter now? Nope, the father replied. See that goat over there? Do the same with it. The city boy did as he was told and came back, asking, Now can I marry your daughter? Not yet, said the father. One more thing. You see that pig in the sty? Go ahead. The young man, though exhausted, did as he was told. When he returned, the farmer said, All right, you've proven yourself. You can marry my daughter. To which the city boy replied, Marry your daughter. No thanks. How much for the pig? <laughs> Little Johnny and Susie, both only ten years old, believed with all their hearts that they were truly in love. One day, they made a big decision. They wanted to get married. Feeling brave and determined, Johnny went over to Susie's house to speak with her dad, Mr. Smith. He walked up to him and said, Mr. Smith, I love Susie very much, and I want to ask for your permission to marry her. Mr. Smith, finding this situation incredibly amusing, decided to play along. He asked, Well, Johnny, you're only ten years old. Where do you plan to live after you get married? Johnny, without hesitating, answered, We plan to live in Susie's room. It's larger than mine, and we both can fit in there comfortably. Mr. Smith couldn't help but smile. Then he asked another question. Okay, but how will you support yourselves? You're both too young to have jobs. How will you take care of Susie? Johnny was quick with his answer again. We'll use our weekly allowances. Susie gets $5 every week, and I get $10. That adds up to around $60 every month. We think that should be enough for us. Mr. Smith was starting to be impressed by how much thought Johnny had put into this. So, he thought harder to come up with a question that Johnny might not have an answer for. After a moment, Mr. Smith said, Well, Johnny, it looks like you've really thought about everything. I just have one more question. What will you do if you and Susie end up having your own children? Johnny simply shrugged and replied, Well, we've been pretty lucky so far. Ha, 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 